Hey gang, this is Dave with Systematic Investors Group. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, it's December the 6th, 2021, and I just wanted to share some thoughts uh, with the group here on um, the idea is, you know, when to interfere with your trading strategies or your trading systems. Now, we don't usually recommend that you ever mess with your trading systems or strategies because you never know what's going to happen in the market. So, you know, normally we have our Alera. This is uh, this is not my live trading account on the on the computer that I'm doing this video. Um, it's on my production computer. But um, you know, normally we have Alera portfolio manager open, and we've got you know a number of strategies that might be running, and we just let it do its its thing day in and day out, and we don't mess with it. But there are certain times and certain situations um, in life and in the market where you may want to. Um, sort of interfere with your trading strategies and your trading systems. So I'll give you an example of when that might happen. So recently I wanted to take some profits in my trading and um, you know I wanted to take some money out of my account and I figured the easiest way to do that, uh, it's not something I do often, but the easiest way I do that, uh, I thought to do that would be um, you know just to close out all of my trading accounts and um, you know close out all my positions, close out all my strategies and just you know, turn them off for a week or two, take out the money that I wanted, uh, the excess profits, and then um, reset it back to my starting equity, which is exactly what I did. So um, I know this looks a little bit messy. Let me just clean this up a little bit, see if I can make this actually big so you can see uh, what the logic was. So maybe I should explain first what I'm looking at. So. Um, you know, I have a background in technical analysis. I've spent a lot of time learning technical analysis. I look at, you know, levels. I look at, um, you know, indicators and different things. Now, not all of this, you know, stuff, not all of this methodology is incorporated into my actual trading systems. But I, you know, I look at the major indexes. I look at, you know, commodities. I look at currencies, things of that nature, just to get an idea of what's, you know what's going on in the world so just to give you uh, an example so this is a daily chart uh, this is a 60 minute chart in the middle and this is a um, a seasonal chart um, which measures seasonal tendencies over uh, you know an average seasonal tendency over the last 20 years of whatever's being charted and of course you know you can look at many different things but you know the backslash ES um, represents the S&P uh, uh, 500 futures. Now I like to trade, I like to look at the futures charts because they're a lot cleaner. You don't see all the gaps that you might see uh, on the SPY chart. So if you look at the SPY chart, you know, you can see some gapping and things like that, especially in the 60 minute chart, which is in the middle. So I like to look at the, um, the futures charts. Now, let me just figure out how I can expand this. Um, maximize cell. Okay, that's how you do it. Okay, so essentially what I was looking at here, this is a recent example of, you know, why I, I interfered in my trading. So if you look at the daily chart of the S&P futures, let me just remove, I'm going to remove all the old drawings. Okay. Actually, let me just remove all the drawings. Uh, remove drawing. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep some of the trend lines on. Um, but if you look at this, uh, one of the things that you could see was that, um, you know, we had this pullback here. Right. And then we broke this trend line here and we started, you know, with this kind of wide range kickoff bar, uh, we broke this trend line. We started uptrending again. Now, once we had this nice little uptrend here, um, it made sense to take profits. So, you know, I had profits in my trading account for the year and I thought, you know, I'd like to take some of the money out and maybe just reset to my starting equity. And I thought this was a good time. Now, the reason why I thought it was a good time was because when you have a kind of pullback like this and then you break out above the previous highs, which were right around this area, um, normally you will, you know, you will extend um, a certain amount. Now, one of the things that I look at 
uh, is I look at Fibonacci extensions in my, uh, you know, my discretionary sort of analysis. So if you look at a, an extension from uh, this high to this low, you know, we did a, a one, two, seven, two extension here. And then I thought we'd probably, because the market was strong, get closer to a one, six, one, eight extension. Now, if you have a really strong market, you might even extend all the way up to the two, six, one, eight extension but that's you know that's highly unlikely but the likely scenario uh, the likely scenario is uh, is to extend to the 1618 now right around this point we were getting close to the 1618 and I thought okay this is a good time to you know interfere in my trading systems take profits uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, and reset my account uh, so that's that's essentially what I did and then I thought you know I'll wait till the next pullback and then I'll get back in the market. Maybe I'll be out of the market for a couple of days, maybe a few weeks. So essentially, this is what we had here. I got out of the market right around this bar. No, it was actually, it was this bar. Um, so I got out of the market thinking, okay, we're close enough. And, um, and got out of the market. And then I was waiting for the next pullback. And when I looked at the uh, seasonal chart, the seasonal chart was interesting because it was right around um, this point here. And uh, if you look at that point here, um, the seasonal chart told you that, well, you're gonna probably have a little pullback. Now this is not an exact science, but you know, you're probably gonna have a little pullback. And then we usually have a Christmas rally and uh, you know, probably eight times out of 10 will rally uh, into Christmas, right? So everybody's probably familiar with, you know, that time of year, that seasonality that Christmas rally. So that's essentially what I was expecting. Now, um, you know, taking profits here. Um, now my timing wasn't that great to be honest with you because once we, um, once we got back, when, once we had this little pullback, it looked like the market wanted to start moving higher already, even though, you know, the MACD was really, um, you know, really overbought and and it looked like we were going to go lower, but there are many situations where you just do this and then you bounce off and you just keep pushing higher. So I actually got back in the market, you know, soon after, after this minor pullback, um, which was a little bit too soon. Um, but, you know, it's, it's very hard to time, you know, to time certain aspects of the market. It was easy to time this aspect of the market where, you know, we broke out of that high. We came into a 1618. It was pretty obvious, you know, where the area of resistance would be and where it made sense to take profits in this area up here. Uh, what was harder to time is when exactly to get back in the market. So, um, I mean, that's that's essentially what I did. Uh, that was a good demonstration of, you know, when you want might want to interfere with your systems if it makes sense for you to do so. Now, so where are we at now? Well, now we've had a healthy little pullback here. And if you look at the, if you look at the chart, now just full di full disclosure, I'm back in the market. I'm taking a little bit of heat through this pullback. I think my account's down about six or seven percent, uh, which, as far as drawdowns go, is not uh, not a huge concern. Um, let me try and make this a little bit nicer. Okay. So, you know, now we've had this pullback, there's been a little bit of technical damage in terms of this trend line, but you can see here normally around a previous high, you're going to find some areas of support. Well, we punched through that area of support and it's not a clean level, right? It's, it's usually like a range or an area. You can see here we punched through it, then we came back up above it, we pulled back through it. Now we're finding support in that general area. So the question is, are we going to break um, this intermediate downtrend. So when you look at it from that perspective, I'm looking at the 60 minute chart and the 60 minute chart's interesting because, um, you know, we've, we put in what looks like a double bottom and we broke, we had some accelerated selling and broke through this down channel. And then, you know, we've been testing the, uh, the upper limits of of the um, uh, of of the upper uh, trend line of the channel, and what I'm expecting to hap have happen if we are ready to move higher uh, would be for this double bottom to sort of hold, and then for us to um, you know eventually you know put in a higher low here, um, um, and 
break through this channel decisively with a clean close above this down channel line. So right now it's very inconclusive. You know, you're coming down and testing the zero line on the MACD on the daily chart. You've got a short squeeze in play, which is not a good sign. I mean, that, that's telling you the selling pressure is to the downside. But you can see a number of things happening here. You can see a number of things like, for example, you've got, um, from a technical standpoint, you've got, um, you know, some positive divergences here. You've got a lower low here. Uh, versus this low here, but you've got a higher high in the momentum of the MACD and of the squeeze momentum. So you've got some positive divergences on the 60 minute chart. And, you know, like right now, you're just you're just dealing with the zero line here, which is pretty neutral. But if we can decisively break above that zero line and break that downtrend, that would be a good timing from a timing standpoint. Uh, that would be a good indication to tell you, you know what, maybe it's maybe this pullback is over and it's a good time to get back in the market. Now, when I was trying to time this high, um, if we didn't have this minor, you know, um, restart of the uptrend here to try and trick me and we did start having a decent downtrend, I would have waited for this situation to get back in the market. It's something that I would normally wait for where you've got like a nice, clean, established downtrend on a lower time frame chart and then you break that that downtrend and, and you have obvious signs of moving higher. And those obvious signs, as I mentioned, could be positive divergences, breaking the downtrend line, you know, having a partial decline and then a break of that trend line. And that would be a good sign to get back in. So uh, long story short, I'm watching this market very closely, um, hoping that we get that that December Christmas rally. And it looks like we're trying to find some support. Uh, in this area, uh, which is what you would expect from a technical standpoint, and looking to see if we can actually push higher. So if you look at some other, um, you know, complementary markets like the uh, the Dow futures, you can see the Dow futures already put in what looks like a, a pretty decisive bottom uh, off of this. Um, I believe this is the 200. Is this the 200 or the 50 period moving average? You know, at this point, I don't even remember. Let me just check this out. Sorry, just bear with me, gang. Yep, so that's the 200 period moving average. So that's an area where you would find, you know, some pretty good support, especially when you look at this previous range. The 200 period moving average on the Dow futures coincided with, um, you know, this previous area of support. So you've got this, you know, this area of interest here of support, and then you've bounced off and you've broken that downtrend line. Now you've got over overhead resistance, which is, you know, it may stop that um, progression, but this is kind of what I'm looking for to have happen in the, um, in the S and P futures. So you can see here, you had a pretty pronounced downtrend uh, channel, uh, downtrend lines uh, that, that can denote you know, and you can delineate the this downtrend, this down channel. I apologize, I'm having you know some Monday, some Monday sluggishness in my speech here. Um, so you know, you've you you had this channel. Then you can see, you know, you've had this partial decline. Um, you had, um, you could see momentum was starting to pick up to the high side. But then you broke this down channel and you put in higher lows, and you're putting in higher highs now and you're breaking above, you know, some overhead resistance. This is a very constructive chart pattern, and this is something that you would want to see in the S&P futures. But, you know, you can bounce around and look at some of these other uh, markets to see, what, you know, which ones may be leading. The Dow obviously had a deeper pullback than the S&P futures. Um, but if you look at, let's say, the, um, the NASDAQ, um, the NASDAQ looks like it's starting to try to bottom as well. Uh, on the 60 minute chart and on the daily chart. And you can see there was that area of support uh, on the daily chart um, right around a previous high, which was here. Let me just expand this out so it makes more sense. Maximize cell. Okay, let me just do this. Okay, so you can see here we had that breakout point and then we were testing this area of support from the previous high. This is a good area um, to get interested. The only thing I don't like about it um, is that, you know, we have a fresh 
one dot um, Bollinger Band squeeze, uh, which which isn't necessarily a great thing. But um, if you look at, you know, we're still moving higher in the charts and the MACD is still above the zero line, uh, which gives me, you know, a little bit more confidence that this trend is not over. If we were clearly below the zero line, uh, then this would tell you, you know, that the 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 trend might uh, the trend might be um, maybe over. Uh, for the short term. So this, you know, this is also looking pretty constructive. It looks like we may be, may be bottoming here. Another chart that I look at in terms of correlations, if, if you look at the currencies, the USD CAD, we had a nice little bounce in the USD CAD and this market um, often moves um, uh, contrary to the, uh, the previous markets we were looking at. And you can see there's quite a bit of overhead resistance here. Uh, and it looks like like around 128, 129 level um, that we might have some significant overhead resistance. So, I mean, obviously these, uh, the, this kind of analysis is, uh, is not guaranteed, uh, but we're just kind of looking for the weight of the evidence. Now, I still use technical analysis in, uh, you know, just from a day-to-day -day, um, perspective, but I don't use it a lot so i don't do a lot of discretionary um i don't do a, i don't make decisions based on uh discretionary analysis but it still gives me you know comfort knowing that you know okay you know this was a good area to get out this is probably a good area to get back in and uh you know it's it's something that's really quite helpful so if you are going to interfere with your with your strategies um you know have a good reason to do it um try to avoid it um, but, you know, hopefully this will kind of shed light on some logic um, and some ideas on when it might make sense to do that. You know, when we've had, for example, a really good run in the market and you want to might want to take some profits, reset your account to your starting equity and, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and start trading again. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if nothing else, maybe it'll give you some insight into where we are right now in the market. Um, I think we're getting close. Um, to uh, to an area of potential bottoming and uh, and potentially moving higher into a uh, into a Christmas rally. Now, if we don't do that, um, because we're right kind of at a, an area of really a lot of importance and a line in the sand. If we don't do that and we break these areas here, well, then you're you're really going to have to look at a move all the way down to these previous lows as a possibility and you know, to this 200 period moving average, which would be a pretty significant pullback. Um, and then looking at that area as, you know, are we going to find support in there? And is the uptrend going to uh, it going to continue? So hopefully we don't have that harsh of a pullback. Uh, hopefully this area will hold and we'll start to move higher. Um, if the Dow is any indication, uh, it looks like it might be, um, you know, it might be um, leading the way in that respect. Um, so we'll just have to see. Okay, this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, to reach out to me at uh, systematic-investors.com. You can uh, there's a contact form there, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you, uh, you know, on a future webinar uh, or at a future update. Uh, thanks again and uh, good trading.